Listen, I'm not trying to be transphobic or say anything out of pocket here, okay? I'm really sorry, this is gonna get really graphic, uh, descriptively. Um, he wanted someone to quite literally pop his ball sacks with their bare hands. Why are we doing it? What is this? What? He's coming up with a new Christian scripture now, what the fuck? Were any of the, uh, victims that were, uh, in this cult, were they members of, like, the LGBT community at all, or...? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you really think a judge is gonna sit there and listen to some tall tale about werewolf vampire gods and shit and be like, yeah. And this is, you know, and this is somebody that needs to be stopped before, you know, it essentially escalates too far and we end up with a, you know, a miniature Waco situation. <laughs> so, yeah, or, or Jones if, Town situation, like, it, it, <laughs> This interview has led to about five new insane claims being made about this whole thing. Guys, come on, please. Just look, we're trying to be respectful here, okay? <laughs> What's kind of funny to me is like Mama Max was pushing to have like Moist Critical and other big content creators cover his video and get Spencer on for interviews and to talk about it and stuff like that. And anyone of any like meaningful substance has gone on to like shit on Max and shit on what he's been doing. So they're left to go on Red Pagan Corner, 400 sub YouTube channel <laughs> ran by Nicole. All right, and we are live. So, awesome. <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm uh, Comrade Red Pagan, and I'm here with Spencer. Uh, Spencer is a uh, survivor of CSA, and this has been a topic that I've okay, been wanting wonderful. to discuss how do I make for money off some the time now. We speed this up. And it's been Spencer a topic three days that... Ago. Where can um, I send it to you? We've oh, I've got it. Thank you. Other situations uh, in the past, and so I'm not going to spend too much time babbling here. Um, but I do want to, because I do want to give Spencer uh, the time to talk about her experience uh, with everything and uh, just discuss her story. So, um, yeah, Spencer, take it away. Um, do I guess what best places is just kind of start from the beginning. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess I can go a little bit in my childhood too because that is somewhat pertinent. Um. So when my mother had me, she pretty much just kind of gave me these other people. They were like kind of paying for a car and whatnot. Um, there were like five possible dudes that could have been my dad. Um, uh, one day, my uh, my dad's mom gets a call being like, hey, your son needs to sign away his rights to his kid. And she's like, what kid? My dad's like, what kid? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, they went and visited me and everything. And um, the people that my mom had given me to were kind of like drugging me, uh, giving me shit that would keep me asleep. Um, First time I was ever awake when my dad's family visited me, I projectile vomited on my grandma. Oh my. <laughs> and anytime someone would pick me up, I would stick it up, like just straight as a board. Um, so yeah, I was kind of neglected by uh, those people. Um, 15 months, uh, my fam my dad's family got custody of me and I was raised by my great-grandparents. Um, great-grandmother passed uh, when I was nine. Um, I stayed with my great-grandfather for two more years and moved in with my dad and my stepmom. And from there, I was kind of just Depressing. tossed from there. The black lipstick really brings out the five o'clock shadow. Listen, I'm not trying to be transphobic or say anything out of pocket here, okay? But I think that black lipstick on <clears throat> certain faces doesn't look particularly good. I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? Family, family member to family member. And so I grew up with this feeling of, oh, well, nobody really wants me. I'm just kind of... Okay, there you go. Take care of her. I'm like that dog that someone's just like, oh, well, you're shitting on the carpet. You're out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was, I had a lot of rejection trauma. Um, and my family didn't fully understand. They didn't know I needed therapy for losing my great grandmother. And I already had mental issues that we didn't know about because um, I'm also bipolar. Um, and uh, around 2015, I made it back to my dad and my stepmom and um, finished out that school year, went to summer school, started a new school year. And one of the girls that I had met in summer school had introduced me to this dude named uh, well, he went by Quinn, and it was spelled with a C. I don't know what it was with him always using C's, but... <laughs> oh, God. Look, this is the... Hey, guys. Okay. So, welcome to Red Pig. No, we can't. No, 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 no. Just watch this. I Just watch this. Just watch this. <laughs> um, but his name was Quinn, um, and she was like, oh, yeah, he's my fiancé and everything. She's 16. Yeah. Um, and I was like, at the time I was like, oh, it's not weird. He's just 18. Right. It's whatever. Okay, and, um, eventually, um, things just, people. I guess my mental state just started deteriorating a little bit. Um, I've been getting into a lot of fights with my family. Um, and Camden, or Quinn at the time, uh, he just kind of, oh, well, there's one thing he was like, oh, I knew you in a past life. 
and so like really like love bombing and oh my gosh yes i knew you then we, we were destined to meet again and as things started getting worse with my family um, are there any weird I, like, reading or anything bedroom, okay. i go to the bathroom to talk on the phone with him woke, um, cause woke, I with my woke. sister and there was a baby monitor in there oh yeah so uh i would like sneak off to the bathroom and call him and everything he had me like uh, there, there was one point he told me there was like demons in the house and i had to draw sigils to protect uh, myself and i had to i had to cut myself and use the blood and put it in every corner of every room oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so i ended up doing it to my tongue because i was like that's gonna heal the fastest so um i was just doing shit like that i eventually got in trouble at school and uh my uh my stepmom and i had gone into a physical altercation um and after that I was like, no, I gotta get the fuck out. And so I ran off to a friend's house, got an Uber, and went to Carrie, that's uh, the girl that was his fiance, um, went to her place. And um, that wasn't like when I officially ran away. I like was trying to, but I couldn't really get anywhere. And eventually uh, they figured out that I was at a McDonald's in the town and my dad came and got me. Um, that Friday, I uh, snuck out of the house times. that morning. And like hauled I out. Literally, I literally, li the reason I'm watching this is I don't think we're gonna do anything with this segment. I just li literally wanna rattle through it just to see what's said because... You know, I've got my doubts about this Spencer person now. To the high school, my friend got me an Uber to the megabus station in Dallas, on. and I was out of state that night. Um, on my way to Georgia, um, I got sexually assaulted. Um, and then I managed to get my ass on another bus. Um, made is it, it just me, or is like this Spencer person getting like raped, sexually assaulted, and abused at every single turn in her life? I guess it can happen, perhaps. But it just seems like every possible direction they're turning, there's someone there ready, willing, and able to sexually assault them. It's just so it's such an unusual tale of just constant, endless sexual assaults throughout her entire life. To Memphis and stayed with a dude that actually was really nice to me. Like he was like, "You're just like my daughter." So it was just like, a, "Oh well, you know, you can shower here. I've got to go to work." Uh, you're. It's like it's like sideshow Bob stepping on a rake, stepping on seven rakes, but instead of every step they take, they're okay, getting that's raped. Wonderful. But your children watch whatever, eat whatever. Thank you for the super chat. No. Yeah. Like, to laugh it was just, he was a really, really nice man. Um, I'm lucky that I met him because I don't know where what would have happened to me if I didn't have somewhere to go. And, I ended up, and, I'm sorry, just to backtrack a little bit, because uh, you were traveling to Georgia because you were living in, I believe, like Louisiana or someplace at the time? Texas. Texas, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm from like DFW, Texas, born and raised. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Texas is party. Yeah. Um, but um, after about a week, Camden uh, Quinn got uh, this one girl in Australia to buy my bus ticket from Tennessee to Georgia. And once I made it there, he got an Uber and came and picked me up. And from the moment we stepped out of the car and the Uber pulled off, he like he pulled the screen out of his window, went into the house and snuck me into it. Come to find out now that um, after the fact, he was also using that window when he still lived with his mom to sneak other people in. Yeah. So, yeah. Because uh, so, so that's the other element of this story. So I just want to point out a few things that I've got my, kind of more questions about, I guess. But this Camden guy apparently was able to keep, get Spencer in and other people too into the property. And apparently the mother had no knowledge of it whatsoever. Right. So that seems so far fetched to me. How? How on earth could you repeatedly bring women into your property to the point where the, your mother has got no idea? Like, it's a kind of Hollywood trope of sneaking through the window. Maybe that can happen, but constantly and endlessly having people coming through. It's just, it's so implausible. Because he was, because he was doing all this uh, in, uh, out of his mom's house, basically, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. like when he first started all of this, it was under his mother's roof. Like, oh my God, like his brother saw me, his brother knows I was there, but his mom had no fucking clue that I was there. And it wasn't an issue of food going missing because he, he starved me sometimes anyways. Um, uh, there was a lot of uh, sexual abuse and physical abuse that would go on. He would physically abuse me under the guise of um, training me to uh, protect myself. Um, he also like had me on Whisper trying to find uh, random men to sleep with. And uh, that never actually happened. But there was one dude that we got into contact with that wanted his... I, I'm really sorry. This is going to get really graphic uh, descriptively. Um, he wanted someone to quite literally pop his ball sacks with their bare hands. Oh, my God. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? Yeah, that just sounds crazy. Being interviewed by Goth Chris Chan is a good idea. Okay, call it with a transfer remarks, okay? Jesus Christ. It just is so... All these extra, extra alias details that get added on and included now. Like, oh yeah, there's a dude and he wanted us to pop his balls with his hand. It just, it, it's just, it just sounds like scene girl tall tales. That's it. That's what it seems like and, to me. Yeah, that we he actually came out and um 
we went to the end of the neighborhood. It was like a two minute walk from his house um, to this gazebo. He sat in the gazebo while I had to squeeze this dude's balls. And it was really weird. And sick. wait, so that actually, is she saying that actually happened? She's saying that the ball, sque <laughs> she's saying the ball squeezing did in fact occur. Wait, you're saying, wait, this is different to what they've said before. Yes, Seven, is that right? Seven in chat is saying that apparently before they claimed that they got away before the trafficking occurred. But now apparently the trafficking did happen. 16-year-old me was trying really hard not to laugh because it was like, oh, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> um, we got like 70 bucks from that that he was supposed to buy his food with, but then I don't know what he ever did with the money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, after claiming before that she fled because he was trying to force her into this. Uh because he was like trying to make me sleep with men i was like i thought i was in a relationship with him i had stockholm syndrome because the whole thing was like oh yeah you're my girlfriend you're my wife like uh it was bad stockholm syndrome um yeah. he's like oh yeah sleep with all these men i'm like no that's me cheating i'm not okay with that and that's when he told me that leviathans were coming for me and that i had to get out of the house because i wasn't going to be safe and <laughs> you need to sleep with all these fellas if not the leviathans are going to be on their way okay suck this guy's dick there's a leviathan just down the road it's on its way suck his dick now to get rid of it like <laughs> i mean apparently there were 16 when this happened maybe they were just young and like it just how does this sound real this does not sound real this sounds so far fetched and absurd and is there anything to back any of this up? Once again, once again, we've got another interview with this Spencer person, right? So she's gone on another show to talk about the situation. Any proof? Any evidence? Any other information? I thought the whole point of this was they were going to take time away to actually make a video about this. But now we've got more press tour bullshit from someone that probably is one of the only people willing to have this person on. Um, I have to go into foster care and I can't come back to Texas because if I do, my family will physically abuse me. Like, this is all the shit that he told me. It, it's like there's some people who their entire life is presented as this calamitous train wreck, right? People have got problems, of course. People have got issues. But the sheer calamity that's being described gets to the point of, like, absurdity where I'm 16, I'm squeezing this guy's balls, I don't want to sleep with other people, so this guy's telling me that I need to go because Leviathans are coming, but then if I go back, my family's going to abuse me. It just sounds way too absurd to have that much bad luck come your way in life, right? It just doesn't sound real. So I called uh, called 911, a uh, police officer came out, um, you know, took my statement, uh, and then he uh camden had walked out to the gazebo and sat there with us and he was like yeah i would bring her food and everything uh she she's just this homeless chick that would wander the neighborhood trying to make it seem like there was nothing there um yeah exactly that's i mean i presume some of this is true like some of the aspects of the story are true but this narrative of her being in some child trafficking werewolf cult is too far-fetched she's probably some you know run away from a bad home that's in a shitty relationship or something like that maybe but this extra narrative that's put on top is just yeah and yeah after that i went into foster care um a couple months after that he broke the relationship off with myself and um another girl it's kai um he he broke things off with us and um then i got shipped off to a group home shipped off back to texas and i stayed Way too charitable. Well, no, but some of these aspects are true. Like, there's a picture of her with Camden Gerard Davis. She was at some point with Camden Gerard Davis in some capacity. That's what I'm saying. It's all the extra stuff that is probably embellished or, if not, outright bullshit, right? Stayed in the cult no online we can't, we can't until... When was it? Uh, I think it was... July, 4th of July 2017 uh, yeah, that's when I officially left and yeah I wouldn't have been as vocal about this if it wasn't for him after the fact having Carrie the girl that introduced me to him in the first place threatening my sister who was four. Oh my god yeah like she was like yeah so uh i know where uh where she lives i know where her family lives and uh if she doesn't stop this because i was trying to contact um the most recent or one of the two most recent that spoke out um ishmael 
Um, if she doesn't stop trying to contact her family, I'll be seeing her. And she put my little sister's name and said very soon. Oh my God. So that was the night that I broke down and told my family everything. And yeah, uh, contacted trafficking 911 and they took my report. I don't even know if they ever filed it. I keep trying to email them and they, they've emailed Max, but they won't email me back. They were like, oh, well, we can't give you that information because uh, you don't have the victim's consent. So me as the victim, I'm asking and they're ignoring yeah, me. And they're, yeah, just, you know, stalling and just kind of roadblocking you. <laughs> if they and this part, oh God, this, <clears throat> this individual, Red Pagan, Nicole, and Nicole here is just like eating it all up. <laughs> they're not like they're not putting any pressure or any questions to them they're just going yep this yep 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 just eating it all up yep 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 <clears throat> when this stuff here was just you know it sounds too absurd to be true even just asking this sounds like a really crazy story sounds like you went for a really tough time you know evidence question mark anything anything at all that backs this up in any substantive way beyond just your word he didn't file that report that is a crime in and of itself right especially because it is a federal crime being that Camden lured me from Texas to Georgia. Yeah, that that's a felony because that, you know, you're crossing state lines and, you know, essentially was, you know, was running what was, you know, a human trafficking ring, you know, and, and, you know, that's, and that's just the, that's just the start of like the list of crimes that are involved here. You know, we, we obviously the, you know, child, you know, child sexual abuse and everything else. Like also, yeah. Wasn't she, like, on her way somewhere anyway? Like, she was traveling already, wasn't she? I don't think she traveled specifically to meet up with him. It was, like, almost more of, like, a happy coincidence or something. I don't fucking know. Dude, this woman's story is too hard to follow. Fuck me. Red Pagan doesn't know anything. Red Pagan is just a rube who is there to, you know, add validity to this stupid fucking story. Obviously, I mean, look, I'm not going to be too hard on Reg Pagan. They're some small YouTuber. They don't know what the fuck they're getting into. They just think there's some, you know, story that they can get involved in. And they're probably like a believe okay, women. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I too. make money off depressed people? I'm going to read this out because uh, it's not going to read it out. At best, he ran an illegal cattle herding operation. Okay, I disavow. The The collection of child pornography and everything. Like, there is a video of me floating around on the internet when I was 16. Oh, my God. Of, of Camden with me. And that is floating around because he tried selling it to this dude that never sent him the money. Yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that, other members like Ishmael, he solicited... I mean, like, that is like dynamite information to send to the police. <clears throat> you have got proof of, like, him, of this video of you, which came from him. Not as in to watch. I mean, there's two problems there. One is it would be co can be considered uh, CSAM. And also just let's not go beyond that. Oh, anyway, that seems like pretty, you know, big information. Is that new? Uh, have we heard that before? This feels like a new detail to the story. Is that something that's been said before in the other interview? Seems like there's like little nuggets of new information that are coming out of this. Which would suggest to me that this person is like making a lot of this shit up, right? Unless there's evidence for it, of course. But like, where is this all coming from? Oh, she has mentioned it. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, this is the problem with their approach as well. Is that, let's say in in a crazy world, this is all true. Okay. Let's say in an insane world, they're actually telling the truth because they're not laid it out in a clear way in some document. It is so incoherent and all over the place. Well, they're claiming they have reported stuff to the authorities and they've done nothing with it. But again, as I've said multiple times, are they play stating the plain facts of what law has been broken or they're reporting it with Karen and Gerard Davis runs a werewolf cult? Or are they sending them? <laughs> Mama Max has been sending in his video. He's, uh, he, got, he sent his video to the FBI and said, there you go, there's the, there's the proof news nudes from under the guise of being a witch named Giamara. Um and most recently we've uh learned that he's also forced people into taking drugs. Like um 
Ellie is uh, allergic to weed, and he was like, oh, well, then you just need to smoke more of it because it'll get rid of your allergy. Yeah, that's not how it works. I ha I actually have uh, friends that are also allergic to it, and that's not how that works, no. Yeah, no. Like, it, it would be different if it was, like, a medical team, and they're like, okay, well, we're, we're studying this, and this is what we've seen to work, but no, this is just an idiot saying something. Yeah. Um, he would also try and force um, uh, the survivor, uh, going by the alias of uh, Esther, um, he was trying to force her into uh, doing shrooms every uh, day before she'd go to work. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's one thing if someone is consensually microdosing for a shift, but forcing someone to take shrooms, a bunch of them, and then go work a fucking yeah. eight-hour shift to pay for your food and your video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then uh, during this time that you were um, that you were I mean, in the cold and everything, um, it I sounds mean, crazy. But like, why, why? this is why people are saying make the video because now they're saying all this shit on a stream again, open themselves up for more scrutiny. Dude, it's just unreal. No way to verify or check any of these claims that are being made. It's all just people saying shit happened. I don't know. I just believe that. Hopefully, one day we'll see it. That, uh, that one of you had mentioned that uh, you had uh, become pregnant at least once. I um. So I had originally gotten pregnant from the assault in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, Camden beat me until I miscarried that, and then he impregnated me um two more times. Um, and then uh beat me, gave me a bunch of vitamin C, tried to make me over and take cinnamon for those, and then the last pregnancy. I think he had uh, gotten me pregnant either right before he made me go into foster care or the night that I got to my foster parents because he got an Uber right. and assaulted me. Again, what's the time period of this? You can't just get pregnant again and again and again. The body doesn't work like that. What was the time period they were with Camden for? Three months. Was it three? <laughs> it, it, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, well, the, the thing is, it takes weeks to realize you're pregnant in the first place, right? Normally, you're looking at four to six weeks to even realize you're pregnant. And yet we're supposed to believe that this person got pregnant to the point where it was realized, were forced to have a miscarriage, and then were made re-pregnant again, forced to have another miscarriage, and then made re-pregnant again <laughs> within the course of three months. It's delusional. That is not how the human body works. So again, there's elements of the story which you can't really verify or check one way or another. But that in particular, the human body just does not work like that. That is a child's understanding of how pregnancy works. And... You okay, know, it just, it just unfortunately undermines the story further. People. I can confirm that everything she says is true. Spencer's baby ghost. Baby's ghost. Thank you for the 333. And that's the problem is that one detail I know for sure is either totally and utterly embellished or just a complete fabrication because the human body doesn't work like that. So it just leads to more doubt with other parts of a story. Did anyone point out that if you cut your tongue enough to bleed that much, you'd probably need medical treatment? At the very least, people would Welcome notice because you'd hardly be able to speak or eat. To my close and personal friend. Thank you for the sub. Also, you'd need there be surely be medical records because you'd need to see. You couldn't if that was true. The impact on your body would be so substantive. You'd absolutely would have to seek medical care. You wouldn't be able to survive without severe long-term lasting consequences if you didn't seek out medical care for at least one of those, let alone three in three months. So, I mean, you know, the cinnamon thing is an old wife's tale. That doesn't work. The vitamin C thing sounds bullshit as well. I, I Yeah. The only way to get rid of a pregnancy, you've got the Kurt Angle method, haven't you? Or a short, sharp battering of a baseball bat to the stomach. I don't know. <laughs> I actually find it fucked, man. I don't like thinking about it, okay? Anyway, the basic point is this sounds like far-fetched bullshit again. Doesn't sound believable that this this actually happened. Outside of their house. Oh my god! Because he made me like sneak out and go downstairs to the back to see him. Um, and 
when I heard that I was being sent from my foster parents to a group home about two hours away, um, he made me figure out a way to get to his house. And then he, um, he started beating me. And when he saw me trying to protect my stomach, because I guess subconsciously, I was just like, no, I was like three months along at that point. Um, he just three months along. What you guys must have the, uh, the time, the timing wrong then. I'm just putting my lipstick on. How can that be? How can that be that they can simultaneously? You've got to have the timing wrong. Oh, well, no, wait a second. That might. Well, I suppose it could make sense, couldn't it? Because they went away and came back. This was after, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. She says she was three months after she left him and she made a miscarry again after that. So if this story is to be believed, when they were together, there was two pregnancies and two miscarriages in three months. Then she got pregnant again and she left. And then three months later came back Camden Gerard Davis. I'll tell you what, Camden Gerard Davis should consider a job at Planned Parenthood because fucking hell, he is, oh, he is on one with these abortions, isn't he? Jesus. She comes back. And he gets the old fucking abortion, abortion cinnamon out again and manages to successfully abort another kid. 100% success rate. It just sounds so crazy. So then she went back and got a, and got a miscarriage again from his beating. Dude. Wailed on me and I lost that last one as well. So those are four pregnancies of mine at least that were four. terminated by his hand. Oh my god. So I mean to be fair, I doubt this person has got much insight into the cycle of pregnancy, so I can't really blame them for not going into that in too much detail. Um so about how old were you when you were fine when you finally got out of the cult? I was 17. I was about to be 18 and I had only stayed that long because of um him assaulting Kayla both physically and sexually. Um like that I, I stayed only to collect evidence at that point and tried to get as many people on my side to get them out as I could. But he lured a lot of them back in with the whole, oh, well, you're going to lose your supernatural powers if you leave. Yeah. So all these kids were like, oh, no, I want to stay a supernatural being. And also, this is like my family. Why would I leave? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to answer it. If you so after being in foster care, she went back. He beat her to within an inch of uh, the baby's life. The baby was gone. And then she stayed purely as a, 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 a evidence collecting measure, and she was just there to protect everyone else at that point. If you don't want to, but did this cult like have a specific name or anything like that? Or uh, it's had many names. Um, when I was in it, we just called ourselves the Daemons. Um, then it became Guild of Divinity and something Eon, whatever. Um, I can't remember what most recently they're going by. Chad, are you pretending there's a possibility she's credible? Listen, Jomi, if people are willing to believe that there's secret sex dungeons okay, underneath a Jewish How synagogue, do I, I think we can oh, we can leave some room to maybe believe this might be true, right? I think it's absurd and stupid. I think it's complete baloney. But I think there's some aspects which have probably got some truth to it. Some of the like the the physical movements that occurred, like when they were, what was happening. It's just the details that I think are bullshit, right? And there's probably some aspects which have got some truth to it, which have probably got some evidence for. Obviously, it's all the trappings and extra shit that they say that's embellished. But she probably did have a relationship with this guy, and he probably was a bat, like possibly abusive. I think I think I could probably agree that that's likely true. Again, some evidence would be nice. But this narrative that he's a werewolf cult leader and there's all these kids that he had under his spell and he was getting a fucking miscarried a bunch of times, like all of that is seems like complete bullshit to me. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, as they say, okay? I, or most recent that we know of at least, um, but it's, it's had multiple names and it's um, to the point where like, I'm pretty sure he's got his wives running everything now and he's only really talking to people that he wants close, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of, it, this is going to sound really ironic, but in a way it kind of sounds a lot like, you know, those polygamist, like uh, Mormon fundamentalist cults that, that we hear about every once in a while. Um, it, you know, except, you know, in this case, he's, you know, doing this under the guise of essentially being like, like what, a werewolf god or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, some sort of weird, like, you know, infusion of different things. And, you know, as somebody that 
practices like paganism, you know, because, you know, I practice Norse paganism. And it's one of those things where it's like when somebody uses, essentially uses like these different figures and stuff like that and tries to essentially bring new, the new age um, movement, you know, religious movement, in, you know, into their predatory behavior and or just in, in general, any sort of toxic behavior, whether it's that, whether it's, you know, being, you know, you know, a racist. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I kind of, that's where I get really- Wait, are we really bringing in being a racist? <laughs> being a racist? If this is all true, I think being a racist pales in comparison to running a fucking werewolf cult. Call me crazy. Irritated because it's like, you know, because there's what there's what I like to call cultural appropriation, which is, you know, people that, you know, that, yeah, that uh, appropriate the culture of other ethnicities and racial uh, diversity. And then- I'd be careful if I was Red Pagan talking about appropriation, cultural appropriation personally, but that's just me. There's people, and then there's religious appropriation in which people, you know, try to use different religious themes and stuff like that for their own benefit. Or the, Guys, know. I do need to be careful as well, okay? Look, the, a lot of Mama Max's fans are quite woke. And generally speaking, I'm of the opinion that I'm going to do what I want to do for my audience's sake, whatever, right? But I don't want to go too heavy on some of the bigotry because, like, I do want people to actually see this, like, the bullshit behind this, okay? This is one of those situations where I'm actually a bit more invested in it than just stupid internet drama. So I probably do need to be a bit cautious. I think trans women are women, personally. That's my that's my take. That's all i got to say. Or their own, you know, deviant practices. And in this case, this is one of those things that is, you know, that is also a big issue right there because it's like when you start trying to use, you know, because essentially, you know, his, that whole thing of, you know, the Leviathans coming to get you sort of stuff, that that is literally no different than how, you know, the Christian fundamentalists just, you know, try to... He, he also pulled a lot of his shit from Christianity itself. Yeah. Yeah, like the whole, okay. um, he made up this whole lore where there were multiple Adams and multiple Eves, and it was the Adams that ate the apples, and so God told all the different races to go this direction, you go that direction, you hear a noise, you don't look back, and that there was some Avatar Blue people that existed, and the reason they don't exist now is because they were the ones that looked back. Why are we doing it? What is this? What? He's coming up with a new Christian scripture now. What the fuck? I God, it's just making it up as he kind of goes along. And I'm going to take yeah. a Yeah. Well, yeah. It's almost like he is making it up as he goes along, isn't it? Interesting. Interesting that we're attributing that to this guy. And yet this person's narrative is completely and utterly just accepted without any question or pushback. Right? Yeah, that sounds that sounds made up as it goes along. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> doesn't say that he wasn't just forcing other people to, you know, take drugs. I'm assuming that he was probably on some strong stuff or something too, because surprisingly, it... no, he, what I've heard is he kept weed in the house, but nobody was allowed to smoke unless he was smoking. Um, he may do psychedelics, but, um, I know two of the people associated with him are on Coke and that one of the other members had she not left probably would have forced, uh, been forced to take it. But yeah, I don't know if there's like opiates at play or anything, but yeah. I would hope not. Yeah. The, yeah. And then I guess the other thing too would be like, do you think like he also might have some, just some mental mental illness or do you, or or is it just do you think he's just that far into his you know into his predatory toxic deviant behavior that you know <laughs> i really don't know we all of us survivors like every week we're like we're trying to ask ourselves did he really believe this and you know some of us thinks it's a mix of yes and no that maybe yes he believes some of it but the rest of it he knows he's just pulling it out of his own ass yeah. like and he sits there and um the best way I can describe it is like if you saw someone who was faking having dissociative identity disorder, like he would act like, oh, well, now God has possessed me and God is talking. Through. What? I don't think you could fake that. Come on. You can't fake that disorder. There's loads of people that have got it and they're all telling the truth. Me. Oh, now I'm the Archangel Michael. Oh, I'm this Archangel. I'm, I'm Ezekiel. Now I'm Lucifer. Like, yeah. And, and he would sit there and like play each of their personalities into something that we liked. Like my favorite was lucifer because he was just a flamboyant gay guy gay character <laughs> yeah i was just like yeah lucy that's my bitch um oh my God. yeah so he would use um the relationships we would have with these quote-unquote other beings um against us as well um it, it absolutely like screwed with us figuring out that it wasn't real yeah so um you, i think you already covered it early on in your story but um like uh how did he like initially like uh, lure you in like uh, and yeah i guess we'll just start with that question so um around uh the time when, when like i first started talking to him and everything it was the oh i knew you in a past life you know we were meant to find each other again and then um it just i don't even know it he just got to me under my skin and with, when i got into the fight with my family he was like oh well your family's gonna have you arrested and you're gonna be locked up for a few years if you don't run away to me God. so it was very like 
a very split minute decision when I first attempted. And then the second attempt was like, oh, you need to, he had me make this whole video and post it on YouTube acting like I was actually going to commit suicide. Oh my God. Like it was a, oh, I'm sorry to these people. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not good enough for, uh, I think it was like, sorry, I'm not good enough for my family or whatever the fuck. Um, it was just, yeah. So that's another reason why my family thought I was dead. Yeah, that, that I was just gonna say. It, it, it sounds like trying to make uh, make your family think that that you had, had died, and that just so that he could entrap you and you know essentially hold you hostage. Yeah, you know, yeah, that that yeah that that definitely tracks for cultish behavior. Yeah, and just, yeah, yeah, sociopathic behavior. Um, um, as far as like the cult goes, like did it, like you said that uh, you guys have discussed a lot of different things since then about you know whether or not he truly believes in uh, in a lot of this stuff, but. Uh, and you've kind of gone over some of the beliefs that were kind of involved with the cult. But was there any sort of like customs and rituals that were oh, done God, we go. in the cult? Um, there was a lot of times where um he would tell other members that he needed to see pictures and videos of their bodies to see how the transformation is going. Um, he would have us cut ourselves and use the blood for quote unquote sigils and rituals or whatever. Um, I'm trying to. This think. is the thing. That presumably, there must be like loads. If this is like a common thing that he was doing, there must be all this proven somewhere but then you listen to like mutahar say talk about it who's seen the evidence who signed the nda and he's saying that there isn't enough to make a video about it so what is what is this information that he's got that he's showing people that isn't everything that she's talking about here yeah apparently hundreds of victims there's what four i think now that have come forward there must be all this stuff of him saying this surely somewhere for us to look at what else there was a lot of times he would tell us like, oh yeah, you can't, you can't eat for this long. And oh, well now you've got to eat a whole bunch. Yeah. Um, so it was just like abusive tactics like that. Um, Sounds kind of that like, like binging and purging. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, you've mentioned quite a few people as well. Um, uh, you know, a few other names and aliases and stuff like that, but how many victims would you say that he probably has, you know, at this point? <sighs> with as many times as he would purge the groups and get new members and everything uh it's definitely well over 100 probably 200 like i don't know how many were actually in the worst worst part of it but i know that there's a lot that have suffered because of him and uh, some of the survivors that we're in contact with now um like when i got into contact with one of them she immediately had to go into therapy because she had locked it away for so long and thankfully right, she's yeah, she's doing a lot better now. Um, I know that there's another member that's uh, been repressing it. Um, there's one survivor. Um, she's uh, uh, close to Ellie, but um, she's still mentally dealing with this, and she mentally wouldn't be able to handle doing this right now unless we need her for legal reasons. So we told her, no, that is completely fine. Like, we don't want to force anyone to come forward, but we, we want them to have community, and we want them to understand that like they're not alone in this. They weren't the only ones, unfortunately, but you know even we found each other now and i'm really glad that we've given ourselves this little bit of community and we've been able to help each other yeah um i guess another question that i have and um is that were any of the uh victims that were uh in this cult were they members of like the lgbt community at all or yes <laughs> no way did they just ask that question no way why is that on the fucking what 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 does that mean? What does that fucking matter? Who cares? Kids are getting abused. Were they queer, though? <laughs> and yeah, of course they were. Yeah, sure. But like, what a weird question to ask. Does that make any difference? Or always like, is it worse because they're gay or something? I don't know, man. He, he definitely preyed upon a lot of us in the LGBTQ community. Like, oh, well, you're bi? Okay, yeah, we want someone who's bi. Oh, uh, this kid is trans. Hmm, yeah, let me put you on a pedestal real quick. Yeah, like fetish Fetishization and stuff like that and all this stereotype BS that goes with it, yeah. Yeah, he also would fetishize. Um, So there was a lot of times where God would talk through him and be like, yeah, he has to get this member and that member. Why is this person saying this crazy thing? Like, oh, come on. <laughs> On another note, do people know about VTubers? There's some real good VTuber things out there, isn't there? Very advanced. I tell you what, VTubers are a good way to hide your face if you, if you know, in certain circumstances. That I, I think, I would certainly consider maybe for certain uh, 
things but anyway just a little thought i had off the top of my head out of nowhere remember pregnant and and he won't know it's his baby and everything and then when when he himself would talk to us he would satisfy having mixed babies oh my god and i'm like he he told me that he was going to call our kids slurs oh my god and i was like no the fuck you're not <laughs> what you fuck? it also satisfy having mixed babies oh my god and i'm like he he told me that he was going to call our kids slurs oh my god and i was like no the fuck you're not <laughs> Well, she's uh, definitely getting into the the groove of the audience, isn't it? Uh, in, yeah, you know. Oh, by the way, it was going to be racist to my to our theoretical children. Oh, that's terrible business. It, it also kind of backtracking a little bit with the way that that it, he's basically kind of been depicted makes it really seem also like he ha definitely did have like yeah this god complex, almost like he was a prophet or something like that. Which yes. you know, which a lot of which again is very endemic to what a lot of cult leaders do. You know, so <laughs> when God was talking through him or he, he was talking about God, we would have to refer to him as dad. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, and he's he's um made a little bit more of a family line. So now there's also oh uh, God's mother, mother God. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah, just just peeling the layers of the onion of crazy with that. Um, yeah. So, um, I guess the big question I have because you've been you've said that uh, a lot of the victims have been. Uh, also, that's a good point as well. Why would he fantasize about having mixed babies when he'd make a miscarry? That's a little weird inconsistency, isn't it? Maybe it's just like it wasn't the right time or something. God. Listen, good. Look, I'm just listening to see what the deal is here. Okay, if you can make sense of it, you're smarter than I am. But um, seeking their own way, you know, their own therapy and their own like ways of coping and healing and stuff like that. Um, how have you learned to cope with with everything? Like, what's your healing process been like? Well, at first, I didn't have access to therapy. So when I fully realized what I had been through, I watched a lot of Law and Order SVU. Like, I watched it all the way through, like over and over again, because that for some reason it was cathartic to me just seeing that you know even if these are fictional stories these victims are still you know they're dealing with it they're going to court they're actually watching their abusers get put away and it imagine going into some doctor's office and it's like oh i've been i've been raped terribly it's been a terrible business i've been abused raped molested as a kid what can you do to help me let's go what, push a vhs into an old crt fucking tv set Law and order special victims unit starts playing. Watch that. Now, just watch that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's something in that. I don't know. It just sounds absurd, doesn't it? The idea that watching law and order special victims. I mean, but that's the problem, isn't it? Is if she's saying that watching fictional stories gives us some sort of cathartic relief from something was to say that there isn't some embellishing or fictional stories that she's making up again to get some sort of catharsis 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 for some shit that happened in her life i mean again it just it just undermines her further when she's now saying that engaging with fictional stories helped her with some aspect of her life dude this is this interview is a bad idea for numerous reasons it just it helps Creeman pre-watched. What did Creeman say? Oh, Creeman said that she got the story from Special Victims Unit, did he? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Me a lot, especially with the want to eventually put Camden away. Right. Like, I, there's been many times where I've fantasized about myself on that witness stand, looking him dead in the eyes, talking about the abuse that he's inflicted upon myself and others, because... And be like, yeah, and be like, you know, you did this to me. You did this to multiple other people. You know, yeah. you know, we want to see you be put away, for, you know, for the rest of your miserable life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like especially with the fact that we know that he is still running it. Like, how many is it going to take for law enforcement to actually step in? Do you think that by any chance that like he has any, I don't know, connections or something to law enforcement? But wait a second. Okay, I mean. <laughs> Their relationship and their interaction with the police is, is flexible, it seems. There's times where the police are totally useless and don't do anything. There's times where they're saying they went to the police. There's times they're saying they're not going to the police. Um, before they went on this new campaign, they didn't try and reconnect with the police and push things forward. There's werewolves in the PD. ...who might be trying to cover this up or... We've asked ourselves that, but he doesn't have money for that. 
like literally his wives are his cash cows uh, as well as the one girl from australia right like he's got his cash cows but i don't think he has resources like that i just think that law enforcement there is incompetent especially because um when kai was a child she was sexually abused by a family member of hers and them seeing the bruises and doing the medical exams on her and everything they said well you can either go back and live with them until you age out or you can go and stay at this um uh children's mental thing okay. indefinitely so yeah. she had to go back to her abuser and yeah. that's the same department that right this is brian's comment not mine Okay, I'm reading out a comment from, I'm engaging with chat. So Brian says, have no idea who you are, just saw you were streaming about my Max, and then I'm like, who the fuck is the dude with the black lipstick? That's a trans woman, you bigot. Sorry, that's a woman, you bigot. Okay, we support trans lives here. Took her report about Camden and then just never contacted her again. Yeah, it seems like a level of incompetency, maybe even a, you know, maybe even a, a bit of corruption that's involved within those departments. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just. Um, and then I was kind of like, you know, wait, I, they're claiming corruption in police departments. Her report about Camden, and then go and stay at the. Well, you can either go back and live with them until you age out, or you can go and stay at this um, uh, children's mental thing <laughs> indefinitely. So yeah. she had to go back to her abuser. And yeah. that's the same department that took her report about Camden and then just never contacted her again. Yeah, it, it seems like a level of incompetency, maybe even a, you know, maybe even a, a bit of corruption that's involved. With They're claiming incompetence and corruption at the police department. That's absurd. The police investigated it, couldn't find what is it, probable cause or something. To, they could they couldn't justify arresting him. Didn't have the right level of um, standard to arrest him, and that was it. The case was dropped. And now they're claiming, now this fucking retarded Nicole person is claiming possible corruption. What corruption could there possibly be? What you think the police, we were joking about the werewolf police thing. What, you think the police are in cahoots with some random black dude? Wow. What possible reason would they have to work with Camden Gerard Davis? Camden Gerard Davis just got arrested on some traffic charge as well. God, it's just insane. The amount of just rapid fire shit that comes out of these idiots' mouths. They interviewed everyone involved and we just don't know what happened with the rape kit testing. It's a complete lie they ghosted. Yes, it is. It's complete, a complete... I mean, it has to, that has to exist in order to perpetuate this narrative that the police don't ever do anything about this stuff. Okay, that's yeah. wonderful. But how do I make Thank money for the super chat. depress people? What are the police going to do about a freaking werewolf? Access their stock of silver bullets that they got in the armory, probably. Within those departments. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, um, and then I was kind of like, you don't, again, you don't have to answer it, but like where exactly in Georgia was, uh, was he living at, at least at the time? Was like Atlanta or something like that? At the time he was living. I thought Chris Farley died. You guys are, <laughs> you guys are insane naughty things in a town called Lilburn, <clears throat> and um now we know he's in milledgeville which is in baldwin county in georgia okay yeah so, so yeah, he's, he's moved counties since then and we have contacted uh his county sheriff department and when i spoke to them uh and we offered like hey we can email the evidence what's an email for you he was like oh well i can't really do anything because that's not my jurisdiction but i guess i can go case out the house yeah yeah and then told ishmael wait what happened there? At the time he was living in a town called Lilburn. <clears throat> And um, now we know he's in Milledgeville, which is in Baldwin County in Georgia. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. He's, he's moved counties since then. And we have contacted uh, his county sheriff department. And when I spoke to them uh, and we offered like, hey, we can email the evidence. What's an email for you? He was like, oh, well, I can't really do anything because that's not my jurisdiction. But Correct. Yes, they can't, you can't do anything. What do they expect him to do? The crime occurred in another fucking state. St another state? Is that right? I said that correctly. I don't know the fucking American thing, but that's exactly how it works in America. If a crime didn't occur in the jurisdiction of a police force, then there's not really much they can do beyond pass it on to the relevant department. Another county, okay, county. My bad, sorry. So same state, different county. But obviously in America, the police are very, you know, they have, they have their jurisdiction. They deal with everything within that. 
but then they'll pass it on if they get something from another jurisdiction, right? I guess I can go case out the house. Yeah. Yeah, and then told Ishmael, hey, we, we can't do anything because you don't have the evidence. It's and like, I mean, I'm, I may be making it sound a little bit meaner than the guy said it, but it's still really frustrating when you've got all of these people saying, hey, I was a minor when this man living in your county abused me and he has CP and is likely trafficking people. Yeah. And they're not going to do anything because they don't have evidence. Yeah, it, it's just that, that level of income. Offering to check it out, even though they can't investigate the crime, is actually more than they needed to offer. She's so insanely entitled. Yeah, well, that's the problem in America is... You need evidence for shit, right? And you can't just go off the back of people saying stuff happened. There needs to be something a bit more substantive than just a bunch of people saying shit happened. I mean, in America, you've got, what what is it called? Probable cause, right? Is that what you need? Yeah, reasonable grounds to believe the person um, committed the crime. Everyone coming in and being jump scared by what? Two beautiful women discussing the issue. What do you mean? Competence and, you know, again, I don't want to bring politics or anything into it, but it's also just the general, like, lack of concern for you know women's rights and stuff like yeah. that down there so oh uh, so yeah that i love how these people can just make these sweeping statements about the police yeah they don't care about women's rights <laughs> okay guys I, stop it i know what you're trying to listen please i get it okay i get what you're saying I disavow, but can we can we focus on the matter at hand, please, and not your gender nonsense? All right. Uh, it's yeah. That that is just as a person kind of listening to you know to everything and stuff like that. And I'm sure a lot of uh, the people watching this stream will probably agree with me that 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 itself is a lot to take in as someone who's an outsider, you know, looking in. But to somebody who's gone through it and everything like that, like what people are pointing out is the irony because gender critical types and and uh, you know turfs and whatever will claim that trans women are going against women's rights, okay? And so the irony being pointed out is this person talking about that is ironic because they believe that. I, I'm not speaking one way or another. I, I do not have a comment on that at this time. I, I couldn't even imagine. I don't even think I, I would be able to okay, handle, to, to handle it. Know, hey, Zoli, like thanks for the membership. Zoli gets real, became I, I think a that member. With how my mental health and capacity is, that would probably break me. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that, you know, you're here and that you, that you've made it and that you continue to heal and try to, you know, you know, live, you know, try to live your life as best you can after all that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, I'm really glad that it was, I'm really glad that I was his first living with him because I don't think anybody else would have been able to handle it. Yeah. And I, I, I saw a lot and I'm, I'm glad that I was at least able to start this and try to find him and try to make something happen yeah um i guess then i the last couple of questions that i have is that um we actually talked just briefly about it before we started the stream but um obviously there's been a lot of um flack that has you know come about this since mama max had initially put out the, Ooh, you know, the initial the release flack. of a lot of this and you know there was a lot so i guess i'll basically just say this what do you think um what do you, what do you have to really say for people that have that have been saying that he's been using your, your story and others stories for, uh for clout or entertainment purposes or that he's been trying to bully other content creators into speaking out i just think it's absolutely ridiculous that people could sit there and say that like especially because they aren't on the inside of this with myself and the other survivors they haven't had the conversations or haven't been a part of the conversations that we've had with max like this has been very healing for us this process and i'm really really grateful because if it was so well and good have your little healing sesh but the rest of us want some evidence it's not listen initially I, it's become a circus now right but initially, all people wanted is just evidence of anything. That's all people were saying is, okay, this sounds crazy. Have you got anything to back this up? And it was, oh, yeah, we're going to come out of the video that explains it all. And that's not happened yet. And there's been subsequent streams that have been total disasters. And now this woman is on another fucking show 
to talk about this stuff again with no fucking evidence of anything once again. Go to yoga retreat. Yes, true. <laughs> It's been great for you, Spencer. It's going to suck for the others when they realize their case is fucked permanently and no one believes them. Exactly. And the thing, here's the other problem you've got too. Let's say this ends up in a courtroom and you are Camden Gerard Davis's legal representation. Okay. Right. What are the sorts of things do you think you're going to talk about and point to? Because part, part, obviously the point of it is you are trying to throw doubt on a story in many cases you're just trying to throw doubt on a story in order to prevent the jury from reaching the standard necessary to prosecute so what things do you think you can talk about and point to that are going to throw doubt on the story you've obviously got the absurdity of some of the claims that are being made unless there's hard evidence for it right so the sheer absurdity in and of itself could be used as a tool with which to go and talk about how much of a tall tale it is right You've then got more substantive things like, okay, so the person that's come up with the allegation is now living with the person who is running the story, okay, that's right? Wonderful. And is directly benefiting from the story being Colin told now. Became a member. Thank you for the membership. So you've got Mama Max that's making money off of talking about it. And now Spencer is apparently financially reliant on Mama Max. So they're incentivized then, aren't they? To tell taller and taller tales in order to push and promote their channel more to get more money in the front door. Right. Like just coming about this publicly and talking about it on a stream and going over it like this is an absolute gold mine. Is an absolute fucking gold mine. And they said originally there's some evidence that we can't show in order to protect the legal case. You can show evidence because that's proof of something. You know, the hard evidence, you can't deny that. These are the messages. Here's the proof they're real. That is undeniable. But what they've done instead is they've done a bunch of streams talking about shit, which is worse. Because now they've created low, like a fucking treasure trove of information for any defense attorney to fucking sift over and, and completely undermine the story that they've told. Oh, God, it's so obvious, man. It's so obvious how fucking foolish this whole escapade is. But Spencer's still sat here acting like, yeah, no, as if there's going to be some legal case where they can sit there and look the accuser in the eye. You really think a judge is going to sit there, listen to some tall tale about werewolf fucking vampire gods and shit and be like, yep, yeah, this happened. You think a jury that would listen to this would be like, yep, yeah, this person did all of this crazy shit. Yeah, a literal, someone that's, someone that's literally just passed the bar. Their first case could get this thrown out, right? A fucking layman, a layman reading about the law on the internet could probably get this case thrown out, right? Like, it's so obvious what a stupid idea this has all been. What about the Vampire Council? What about the Vampire Council? <laughs> what do you mean? God, it's so, it's so painfully obvious how badly Max has fucked this up. And they're still pushing the idea that, no, actually, everything's great. It's all good. After this, then we wouldn't be able to find these two other survivors and we wouldn't know his exact location among the things that he's recently been doing, such as the drug stuff. And we also know that he has a gun. Oh, Christ. And he, um, I don't know if you heard Ellie talking about it the other night, but um, he, like, was having people case her house because they were trying to break into it. Oh, my God. They wanted to kill her cat. They, they also did kill cats. So it's only a matter of time before this becomes a legal McNaughta situation. Yeah. If yeah. there isn't already a body out there. It, it sounds to me as if, ba basically, yeah, it's... Because, I mean, Max even stated that he will try to change names, he will try to change locations, he will try to change the narrative, he'll, he'll yes. try to twist things around on other people. And at this point, yeah, at, like any cult leader, they will escalate things if they, you know... Wait, more... where is it? It's Texas, right? Oh, is that correct? It was Texas. It's Texas, isn't it? Fuck, I always forget. Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Don't they all have guns there? Don't they all have fucking guns in Georgia? Isn't it like a big fucking gun thing? Georgia's a, what, a swing state, is it? Or is it Republican? It, I think it was Republican or something, and then it became it went blue last time. Is that right? What joke do you want to make, Nicholas? What are you trying to say? In order to prevent, you know, prevent themselves from being it's the South. We all so, got guns, yeah. yeah. 
like one of the people living with him got felony um got felony charge for like i think it was a smash and grab at a restaurant he worked at mm -hmm. um and like yeah no he's got people to do his bidding so he's he's having other people commit crimes so that he's not culpable for them yeah um that's it's kind of interesting because i'm actually <laughs> what? <laughs> this, you're just adding and stacking on all these fucking what 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 is there any evidence of that We've got evidence for the initial claims. Now we're claiming he's running some fucking criminal empire. Fuck me, man. This is crazy. We've been watching a um, documentary on Hulu that is called uh, Daughters of the Cold, and it's about the um, and it's about the story of the the kids of basically the, the kids of uh, uh, Everett LeBaron, who was the uh, one, a Mormon fundamentalist uh, cult leader, uh, and did the same thing. Moved around a lot. Uh, often used fake names for him and his family, and um, you know, resorted to blood atonement. Oh, by the way, you know, guys, which the uh, the Blackula, the Twitch Blackula emo is now up and running. So let's see those Blackulas, please. Let's get the Blackulas going. It's a membership only, unfortunately, on YouTube, but on Kick and Twitch, it's free. Let's see those Blackulas. Mormon tradition is, you know, it was an old Mormon philosophy. The main Mormon church doesn't believe in it now, but the whole idea was, yeah, um, yeah, is that they had to kill somebody in order to for their blood to hit the ground, and they would and they would scream for atonement to God. That was so kind of a very similar situation to the whole like you know having people cut themselves and stuff like what uh, Camden was having you guys do, and just yeah, just uh, there's a lot of things that um, that just kind of, it all. If I if I didn't have heard any of this story or something like that and had just heard about this person themselves i would have thought this guy would have literally read from you know essentially this guy's playbook pretty much because it does he looks like it, you know on the surface he looks like he's been reading from the cult lead from you know the cult leader's playbook you're telling me some 18 year old black lad from fucking the south has been reading cult leader fucking ideology and it's so so delusional I'm sure he had some weird shit going on or whatever. I don't deny that. But like this idea that he was, yeah, he was reading from the cult playbook. Can he even read? Okay. <laughs> There's no way. That's totally fucking insane to me. This 18 year old lad is able, what does he do for work as well? He's hardly in some high flying job, is he? He knows all the ins and outs and trickery of the cult leader mentality. It's just so delusional. And yet people just like this, just fucking greedily gobble it up. Yeah. And it's, and it's just absolute, and it really is. Yeah. I don't even have a word for it right now. It, it's just absolutely incredible to me that he, that, you know, that he is exhibiting every single sign of a cult leader and trying to wield influence only over his own, his own uh, flock that he's got currently, but trying to recruit new members and trying to, um, According to <laughs> and trying to essentially uh, intimidate <laughs> others and, you know, through violence and other means. It's it's even for those of you that are have gotten out of the cult, have been trying to manipulate and intimidate you and trying to, you know, essentially give you this kind of this fear of you know, I'm still watching you. Like, I know where, you know, you are sort of BS and stuff like that. And it's what he is doing to other members still. Yeah. Or like previous members. Yeah. And it's it's just it's quite. Yeah. So it really puts into perspective to people that aren't that, that want to criticize you know, Max and the work that he's doing and stuff like that when they don't realize how deep this goes. And it, it's not just the sexual predation that he's been, you know, that he's been uh, carrying out against, you know, you and several others, but it's also just the fact that this is a legitimate cult. And this is, you know, and this is somebody that needs to be stopped before, you know, it essentially escalates too far and we end up with a, you know, a miniature Waco situation. <laughs> so, yeah, or, or Jones if Town situation. Like, it... <laughs> This random black lad is going to set up Jonestown to Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> it's going to be Waco all over again. <laughs> Min miniature Waco, I guess they said. What does that even look like? Fucking Waco. There, I think he's going to be like Waco. He's going to have a vampire compound or something. Anyway, I tell you what. Just attack during the day. All you need to do is shoot some holes in the roof and the sunlight would come in and they'd fucking combust, wouldn't they? Or wait, are they werewolves? Are they werewolves or vampires? Or is it a mix of both? If they're werewolves, well, same logic. Just either attack during the day because there wouldn't be werewolves then or don't attack during a full moon. So attack during the day, make sure there's not a full moon knocking about and uh, yeah, I think you'll be fine. It, the fact that if his members Bring can get enough money together, like we know exactly what house he's in. If his members can get more money and he gets bigger property, oh, they're screwed. Because yeah, there may be three women and two guys living at the house right now, but he had Ellie and her partner move out to Georgia. 
So right. who's to say he can't do that to other people? He had me run away from Texas to Georgia at 16. Like, and, and not only that, it, it's not, I mean, obviously property is not as cheap as it used to be, but in comparison to like what you get on the coastal on the coasts of the United States, when you go into the interior and specifically into the Bible Belt, property gets cheaper and it's not really that hard to look on Zillow <laughs> and find like, you know, properties going for, you know, cheap to either rent or buy outright, uh, where people like this, if they get enough money together, could literally end up in a compound. There's actually <laughs> one. <laughs> they fucking literally make the, the, like, it's like they're on a train track. And they're, they've come to the end of the train and they're laying out new track as they go. They're literally laying out new track. Well, yeah, what if they set up a call? What if they get a compound? What if, like, they're literally making up the future as they go along now. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What is going on? This is crazy. That I came across through uh, creepy Zillow listings on TikTok and one of them was like this I think it was like a 16 bedroom like home somewhere in you know BFE Texas somewhere uh and it was uh and it, and when you look at the pictures of this I swear to god it looks like something that you would have seen out of one of those Mormon fundamentalist cults or something like that there was even a school house, there was even a schoolhouse slash church within this this home so very clearly this was you know this was something that was used you know by some sort of cult and people like Camden if getting enough people and enough money together are they going to elaborate on who they think he killed or not I mean yeah <laughs> Just rapid fire allegations of all sorts of misdeeds from when Spencer was part of it to new misdeeds, which apparently they've got some crime empire they're setting up to the point where they're talking about a theoretical cult compound, the likes of which Jonestown or a miniature Waco that we're going to see. And then, and then they get mad when people doubt the veracity of their claims when they're coming up with this absolute cloud cuckoo land fantastical bullshit. I mean, dude. and again, it's like, right, just lay out the evidence. That's it. Just lay out what you've got, lay out the facts, lay out what screenshots okay, you've got, wonderful. whatever you can but show make to make some case that any of this Who's is happening. the dumbest trafficking scammer, Mama Max, Tim Ballard or Eliza Blue? Thank you for the $5. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Mama Max is probably the one I've got the most mileage out of. So we'll go with Mama Max. Heather would be looking for places like this, and especially in rural Texas or rural anywhere in the Bible Belt. Wait, well, who's that Heaven's Gate guy? Wait a second. Someone needs to do this. But someone needs to blackface this guy up. Blackface this guy up and give him vampire fangs, and we'll say that's we'll tell we'll tell our kids that was Cam that that was uh, Cam the Draw Davis, okay? Bumps up nowhere, he can get that where, property. They, yeah, where they can and you know and yeah, so it's it's crazy that to really think about that and the fact that people want to criticize and say that you know oh well, you're just doing this to, for entertainment purposes or cloud or blah 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 or that you know. Um, or, and police not taking this seriously, it's like, the, you know, these people are complicit in whatever happens next. Because if it escalates to the point of violence, oh, which it very much it is already has. has. Wait, no, we're complicit now. I'm complicit in this. <laughs> no, if anyone is complicit or responsible, it's the people that have totally fumbled telling this fucking story. Now it's my fault, apparently. But if you'd have come up with a video and laid all the evidence out, I'd have fucking believed you. But now it's got to the point of absurdity that I don't. I mean, sue me. What the fuck? And, you know, to the point where people, you know, are going to eventually start getting killed. That's going to, you know, that's going to fall back on these people. <laughs> and, people are dying. And I really hope it doesn't come to that. I hope that this guy is brought to justice and is stopped before, you know, it comes to that. But even if that happens, there's the, my worry is, is the, is that is honestly what a lot of cults go through and that's brainwashing. And that's, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if at this point that hasn't already happened. And while some people may be broken of that, some brainwashing. people still are loyal enough that they would carry it on even after the leader. Now he's brainwashing people. It, this interview has led to about fucking five new insane claims being made about this whole thing. Is gone. So um, I think if anything... Yeah, Mike, cult deprogramming. Uh, we've had a couple members that like, they had to cult deprogram themselves yeah. after leaving. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I would say if... Um, Honestly, the people that I think that that's a good way to kind of sum it up is that these people are complicit if they don't stop and do something. And those that are trying to do what? What am I supposed to do about this? 
Call the police and say, yeah, some fat broad claims that some guy, some black guy is some vampire or something. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? What the fuck? Do something. What does that look like? I could maybe make a video about it, sure. But then where's the evidence to do so? Where's any information that would allow someone to put out a substantive video that isn't just repeating claims that have been made already by these people? criticize Max for the work he's doing, that it's for cloud or entertainment purposes, or that he's bullying other content creators. And some of these content creators like have actually literally said that. And it's one of those things where it's just like, you don't know what it, the conversations that these people have been having. You don't know what these survivors have been through. And you don't, and frankly, it, it's like- Then show us the fucking evidence! What? <laughs> no, I don't know anything. So prove something, at least. Anything. A single screenshot to show he's done something bad. Their, oh, I don't want to use the word ignorance, but th their lack of action is very really telling. And that was exactly what Max was trying to say in that video is that we want, you know, the, the story to get out. And that's why we're trying to get other content creators to talk about it. This person's done no research. They've done, you know, they've done no research whatsoever. They, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. There's some small channel that's probably some retarded communist. and what's going on. But, you know, I mean, yeah. The whole conversation has been about the fact they've shown nothing to prove it. And you've got people like Mutaha who've seen the evidence that are saying there's not enough to make a video. Oh God, this is so infuriating to listen to, man. But if they're not willing to talk about it or even go so far as to criticize, literally criticize it, then they are no different than, you know, than they are complicit in the ongoings of, you know, CSA and human trafficking. And so, yeah, and honestly, I, you know, those people, in my opinion, ought to really take a hard look in the mirror at themselves because I honestly, if that was me, I would be ashamed of myself, which is why yeah, I... I've I've been thinking of it as everybody wants to talk crap, but nobody wants to take action. Like my mm -hmm. biggest thing, it's so hard for me not to just want to respond to every comment, but what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Exactly. Like, genuinely, what are you guys doing to help the conversation? Like you can, you can sit there and talk crap all you want, but how is that productive? Why not? That is a, that is a classic Mama Max strategy from Mama Max supporters is to say, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing nothing, but I'm not sat here claiming that I'm out here to protect children from people on the internet. Mama Max is the one that's made all these grand claims about himself. So, yeah, he should be doing something. If someone is sat there doing nothing and they're criticizing and pointing out the holes, they are not. They don't have to do anything. Just pointing out the issues are surely, you know, it's like the classic thing, isn't it? You can be a food critic. It doesn't mean you need to be able to cook a fucking five-star Michelin meal, does it? You can taste food and see whether or not it tastes good or not. If food tastes like shit, you can say it tastes like shit. You can look at something and say it looks like shit doesn't mean that you need to do something about it. And even if there is the implication that you should do something about it, what exactly are you supposed to do? What possible video could you put together? <laughs> that, that's... <laughs> there we go. What do you reckon? That's Sleepy's doing. What do you reckon? If we don't stop Cameron Gerard Davis, this is what we're going to be dealing with, okay? A co literal cult of vampires. Like, wait, imagine Waco, but with vampires, okay? Do you really want to be dealing with that? We need to get Blade up in there. Actually, call the county that he's in and be like, hey, have you guys seen this? Or, hey, have Children you guys seen about this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's all it would take. It would just literally, all, it, all we're asking is that people put pressure on law enforcement to actually do something and bring this person to justice. That's that's literally what what we're asking. And especially with people that have By the way, totally useless. What what if if a thousand people call the police and go do something about Cameron and Gerard Davis, it doesn't change the standard that they need to meet in order to do an arrest and pursue the legal system. What do you think a thousand people calling with the information we got is gonna do? Nothing. They need information, evidence and facts and then they'll be able to act on it. Not just a bunch of people calling them. God, these people are so, they, so critical of the legal system. But they don't have the first fucking clue about how it works. Also, another thing to note as well. Here, they're telling them to contact the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office. What are they going to do? It's not their jurisdiction. They've got no jurisdiction over this crime to be able to do anything about it anyway. You need, if you were going to, it's stupid, but if you were going to contact any police department, 
What was it called? The Gwinnett County, was that it? Anyway, you need to contact the police force that's got jurisdiction over where the crime occurred. Oh my God, these people are just such amateur retards. Criticising the professionals from a position of complete ignorance and retardation. Such wide-reaching audiences, you know, it's, it seems like that, that would be a pretty simple thing to ask for, but no, they would rather, you know, quite, quite frankly, they would rather bitch about it and start screaming, oh, well, they're bullying me into doing this. No, it's, <laughs> it is, it, we're trying to get action, and it's really sad that, you know, <laughs> that people that with not as much reach are the ones that are, that are the most willing to actually do something, and that was why... I wanted to, that is one of the reasons why I reached out and why I want, because I had watched that video and I had heard, you know, heard your story okay, and I wonderful. really wanted to how do I have my audience know, uh, know what was I'm going on there and hopefully get kicked out for eating all the food. Thank you for that. They, you know, even though I don't have like the biggest following in the world, I would certainly hope that, you know, a lot of people watching will be able to take from this and, you know, be, and, and just something simple as make a simple phone call to the, the, this county, you know, law enforcement and be like, what are you doing to stop this? See, I'm, I'm going to quote something really stupid, but Snoop Dogg in Trailer Park Boys once said, see, that's why I like giving interviews to, to these smaller, uh, smaller news stations, because y'all actually give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And that's... It's not, okay, it's just that you, you, you with your retarded story can just run roughshod over retards like Nicole here. That's why you like it, right? That's the reason that you like this. <laughs> Oh my god, man, this is... Oh, I'm getting big cringe feelings from this. I'm cringing quite hard now over this. Now we're going to quote Snoop Dogg. The point here, I was so ready to do this because I was like, she gives a fuck. Her audience gives a fuck. Like, that's what we need, is we just need those ears. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I guess uh, the last thing I will say is that um, if you had any words of advice for other survivors, whether it's of Camden or of CSA and human trafficking, um, what would that advice be? To take a breath, know your worth, and try to reach out to whoever you can that loves you well said i, I think that that pretty much sums it up um all righty um, oh, is there anything else, uh, in particular that you would like to say oh, other than that um oh, oh, as far as like oh. your story and this whole situation that's been going on like anything that you would like to kind of finish off with <laughs> um not really aside from i'm just grateful for people like you I, I'm really glad I could do my part because honestly, I yeah, this <laughs> this shit needs to stop. And my partner and I see this crap happening, you know, in all corners of you know the country, all corners of the globe, and stuff like that. Um, both of us have have uh, you know both gone to high schools where teachers, you know, literally and figuratively get caught with their pants down, and um, it's just one of those things that we say all the time. It's just like it's like why can't people just leave kids alone? And and I think well it, said. Oh my god, we've just solved it. Leave them kids alone. Done. <laughs> I love the way that these people throw all this shade at, p at police and the authorities not doing anything, and then they just come up with these trite platitudes. Yeah, what? Why, the, why do those pesky pedos have to go after those kids so much? Like, <laughs> give up. Just give up, okay? Give up. Oh man, I just, I, I feel kind of bad. This person has just got like a small channel and they're going to get like massively scrutinized for having Spencer on. And then on top of that as well, there's some people that are going to be exceptionally transphobic towards him. Not me, because I'm a nice guy, but <laughs> they're opening themselves up to a world of absolute insanity. Just for having Spencer on. It's one of those things that, like I oh. said before we started the stream, I worry about. Um, people like my sister, who's, you know, not even a teenager yet, and people like your sister, who are still really young, and what world they're growing up in, because the world is already, was already a dangerous place when I was going to high school, and that was like 16 years ago, like, yeah, 10, like 12, 14 years ago, something like that, because I'm getting old, um, <laughs> and, um, but, and it's like, it was a dangerous place to be just five years ago, and it's growing ever more dangerous now, and especially in the online world, with how people are, it's, you know, it's not just predators, but it's also people who are, you know, who just, have nothing to do but to criticize and try to point fingers, you know, at everybody else but the predators. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I want to thank thank you for coming on. Thank you, Spencer. Um, and for everybody that has been watching the stream, um, the name of this guy that we've been fighting to put away for the rest of his miserable life is Camden Gerard Davis. And um, yeah. And uh, what what was the town you said that he that he lived in in Georgia, Mill Milledgeburg or something? Um, Milledgeville, right now. Milledgeville. So Milledgeville, Georgia. Um, yeah. And if anybody out there watching can just even do something as simple as make a, a phone call and, and try to put pressure on law enforcement. You know, right now there's 
six people right now currently watching this at the who stick st stuck towards the end here uh <laughs> so it's like you know even if it's just three people even if it's all six even if it's you know as this starts to gar garner views and stuff in the next coming days if it's just even a fraction of those people that can just reach out and be a few more voices to put pressure on police it's one of those things where my the one good thing i will say about my ex is that uh is that her uh her parents ha had a, a saying about a squeaky wheel and it's one of those things where it's like be that squeaky wheel because you annoy them long enough they will have to do something and that's yeah. what we need to do literally not other legal system work. does this person really think that if enough people just call the police they'll just like what arrest them or something like these people have got no clue about how any of this works they don't know at all that's not how it works you don't just call the police and say hey do something about this there's fucking civil rights and due process that everyone gets, no matter what they're accused of doing. You can't just call a police force and get them to do something. You need to call them and say, hey, here's the information, here's the fucking evidence, here's what you need to do because this person's committing a fucking crime. You need to report a crime to the police. Oh, my God. I just, it, honestly, and it's the same with Mama Max as well. They've got all these, like, criticisms for the police, but they don't even know how it works. They don't understand the most fundamental basics of how an arrest works. Of how you get something from someone is accused of a crime to getting arrested, to getting to the courtroom, to securing a prosecution, whatever the case may be. You know, they just don't know any of it. It's the same as people that criticize like the function of the American government and don't understand how that works either. It's just so infuriating. Um... And then, I would specifically say put pressure on Baldwin County's uh, Sheriff's Department because uh, the Milledgeville Police Department, they say that that's not their jurisdiction. You have to go through the county for this. Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah, call the county sheriff and I will actually uh, I will actually, actually end up Googling their uh, number here. What did you say the, uh, the county was? Uh, Baldwin County in Georgia because there's one in Alabama and Georgia. Okay. And then I will look up the uh, Sheriff's Department that's there uh, and provide the uh, the number for um, for everybody in the description box so that that way they can uh, that so that that way people can call and you know just, something as simple as what are you guys doing to to render render this situation because this guy should have been behind bars a long time ago yeah well like i said uh i want to again say thank you for coming on um and thank you everybody um for wa uh, for watching um i'm red pagan nicole and this has been a special live broadcast of red pagan corner until next time Whoa. Okay. Anyway, guys, I feel like um, this Mama Max stuff is like a McDonald's milkshake. We're sucking on the straw. We've got the last drops coming through. But maybe I shouldn't be using that example right now, actually. But anyway, <clears throat> for now, there's nothing more to say about this. Um, I think that this, for me at least, I've, I've kind of covered as much as I think I want to cover on this. I've been quite extensive. We've got a little summary of some of his old stuff. We'll watch this interview as well. Unless something really crazy or substantive happens... I think that's it for the Mama Max stuff. Oh my god, we got a few more videos coming out though. We're 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 we are really harvesting the crops on this one. <laughs>